welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty where will I be YouTube famous I don't know probably never however well, what I do know is that this is the latest instalment of three continents one palette the palette concerned this month is and as ever the beautiful ladies that are joining me are Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 and Laura from Gold Star Work. So if you want to find out exactly what our challenge was this month with using this particular palette then my friends you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy my part of this three-part instalment with a uh -huh, honey. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have explained in the intro that this is the latest instalment of things mysteriously falling over in my kitchen, which makes me think perhaps we do have a ghost in the house. Alternatively known as three continents, one palette. Not three palettes, one continent, which is what I called it last time. Uh huh, honey. What we're doing this time is we're numbering them. Just trying to get rid of it. If I do this, then perhaps I won't get dazzled by the mirror. There we go. But because we're, we're numbering them and then using either all the odds or all the evens. Now, this central colour is a pressed glitter, which is not eye safe. So for this, I'm not going to include that as one of the colours. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means either way I get four, whether I choose odds or evens. I have swatched the options on the back of my hand. This is the odd ones. This is the evens. I don't know how well that's coming out. Probably not very. There we go. Odds, evens. So you can see we've got a deep one in both, just one's a matte, one's a shimmer. So, I am going to go to, let's try Siri. Hey Siri, odds or evens? No, I don't want information. Siri, pick odd or even. I'm sorry. God, Siri is so crap. Right, let's go to random.org. Okay. So. I'm going to do 1 to 8, and then whichever number it ends up on, whether it's an odd or an even, that is what I will do. So let's see if I can generate. Can we see that? It's chosen number 1, so I've got the odds. Marvellous. So that's this row here, which is... Three mats and one shimmer. Now, as always, this is a teaching channel. Uh, my chronic pain means I can't blend 
very quickly. Um, my fibro means that I cannot bear, I, I, I suffer an awful lot with sensitive eyelids. So I can't blend for long. That combined with the fact that I want beginners to be able to follow this even if they've never picked up a brush before means that I may be going a bit slow for you. Apparently also I talk quite slowly. That's part of being half Welsh, half Yorkshire. I've always spoken like this. I'm not James Charles. That being said, there is a speed widget up there if you wish to use it. Please do so. I'm going to zoom you in in a minute and talk you through the different eye shapes as I always do. Um, if you're one of my regular viewers you can skip forward until you see me wave a brush at you with colour on it. Unless you like hearing me talk through it. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Although to be honest the FP SPF is a bit of a waste of time because I don't think I'm going out later. So at least not during daylight hours. And my eye primer is, of course, my Crown Pebble Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code. I do not get PR from them. Everything I have got, I have purchased myself. Uh, that is just by far one of the absolute best eye primers I've ever used. It goes on dry, even over this bloody visitor, which is still here day two now if it stays much longer I'm going to be charging the damn thing rent it's one of those annoying ones that is just really painful to touch she said keep touching it but doesn't seem to want to come up to her head so I can get rid of it which is really helpful uh, I have been using acne plasters to try and dry them out I think tonight I'll be going in with some of this which stinks but thankfully hubby doesn't mind right um, as I said, I do have a discount code for Crown Pebble. They don't just do white, they have <clears throat> white at the lightest end, chocolate brown and black at the deepest end, and three skin tone colours in between. So you should be able to find something that suits you. The beauty of this going on dry means you can blend over it straight away. You don't have to set it, so you don't have to make that compromise between blendability and losing colour impact. Right eye shapes. I've got deep set eyes but a lot of people who have deep set eyes are told or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids because we have the same issues. We get transference of colour, particularly shimmers, onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease we can't just cut the socket, we have to cut onto the upper lid and when we're using glitters, even with glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through the middle. I'm going to talk you through the two different types of eyes and then I'm going to give you a workaround for each style. When I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. Can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this static upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of that mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demo with this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still in, on camera and in focus. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close it, you can see I've got as much lid space again, if not more, that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see again I've got lid space there that also tucks back away. It's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. So that's how to tell the difference. Right, the workaround. And it's entirely possible I do have a friend of mine who has one deep set eye and one hooded eye. So, the workaround for people with hooded lids. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid where you need your crease to fall. Obviously this will reduce the space between the new crease and the brow 
So use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow. If however you have deep set eyes like myself, what we need to do when we're putting colours through the crease is to just relax our brows, look forward and make sure we've brought them up high enough that you can see them when your eyes are open. And that is it. It is that simple. Right, I'm going to start off with this Morphe M139, which I've not had much luck with in the past. So let's hope it works for me. Right, I got the odds, didn't I? So that's Stinger, Sweet Spot, Queen Bee, and Oh, behave. Okay, Queen Bee is the darkest, but it is a shimmer. So I'm probably going to pop that through my crease. So I'm going to start off with Stinger. Again, Colourpop is quite a dusty formula. But that really doesn't worry me because I just pick it back up next time I put the brush in. Okay. And I'm going to start off up here. Ow, ow, ow. That spot is really, really annoying me and it's really, really painful. It also makes blending um, colours over it quite difficult. Right, I'm holding a brush right at the end and I'm doing little circular movements in this direction coming towards the nose. Be a little bounce in the middle and then reverse the direction coming back out again. This gently moves your eyelid skin around so you don't get any uh, bare patches that you've missed. Um, I do have issues with my blind eye where it got pulled around at the ophthalmic so much. You can see I've got super deep creasing just here. I do have to stretch that lid out, um, particularly when doing... Um, colours on the lid, the mobile lid, otherwise they just they build up loosely in the crease and end up cascading down my eye, down my face during the day, which is not good. So, three continents, one palette. This started with Nona <clears throat> from hashtag my so called life 1977. Now you know I collab with Nona a lot. Um, we are part of the Bitches of Eastwick together. Um, you know, we we get on ridiculously well because it's quite difficult not to get on with the woman. She's just so lovely. Um, because I'm continuing with yellows, I'm not going to clean the brush off. I'm going to go into... Oh, behave. Can you see that even though I use the same colour, this side looks slightly darker than this side? Because the skin underneath, where... Um, I've gone over that spot, it's really sore, it's made the skin go red underneath. Crazy. Right, so I'm going to go in with Arrow Behave and just blend that a little bit lower down, blend the two together. Yeah, so Nona, she is one of the nicest women I have ever, ever had the pleasure of kind of meeting on YouTube. Um, she always has something nice to say. She is genuinely a, a caring person. Um, and she wanted to start a series with the Colour Pan, Colour Pan? Colour Pop Nine Pan palettes is what I'm trying to say. And um, I messaged her saying, yep, yeah, I've got some of those now, I'd love to join in, and she went, oh, awesome. Um, Laura, from Gold Star Work, is also joining in, do you mind? And I'm like, no, of course not, let's, let's do it, all three of us together. And I said, that makes far more sense. I've, you know, I'd collabed with Laura in bigger um, collabs, you know, multi-channel collabs before. And she and I have now had a photo inspiration collab together. Which reminds me, I need to send her some pictures through for the next round um, for her to choose from. Um, 
so this is how it started and we were wondering I like to when I'm doing groups like this because of trying to find the group chat in all my Instagram chats I like to name them whatever the group is named um, and it's also like this is quite nice to name the group as well wow that looks really nice okay I'm just going to clean this brush off and swap brushes this is, I believe, this is a revolution brush, but it's got absolutely nothing written on it. I have what's that there? Oh yeah, revolution. Very, very, can you even see that? There. Have you got anything else written on you? To give me a clue about what this is called. No, apparently not, but it's it's a more tapered, tightly packed blending brush. And I'm going to go into Queen B, which is the satin, but it is the deepest of the colours that I've got. Um, and I do like to put a deeper colour through the crease, especially for people who've had to move their crease and create a new one because darker colours recede backwards, lighter colours come forwards. So if you've had to create a new crease, using a deeper colour along that line will give the impression that it's a normal crease, not one that you've created. So I'm going to just start off by blending this right through the crease. Now, satins and stuff are not designed to be blended. <clears throat> They're designed to be packed on. So I'm fully expecting fallout and I'm expecting it to be a nightmare to blend. But it gives me more of a chance to have a chat with you, which is good. So, yeah, we started off doing this and we decided that with me being in the UK, so Europe, and with Nona being in America and Laura being in New Zealand, we're on three separate continents. You know, Australia, uh, Australasia, <clears throat> which includes Australia and New Zealand, Europe, and America. So we thought three continents, one palette would be an awesome name for the group. And then we just choose a different colour each month as to which palette we want to use. Obviously, um, we haven't all got all the same palettes, but if there is an occasion where, for example, at the moment I've not got the strawberry palette, I've got the watermelon one, but not the strawberry. So if the girls do the strawberry palette, what I would do is I would choose a palette with very, very similar colours. Um, and just create a look that way. I'm popping some of this on the outer third of the mobile lid as well. And then just blending. Blend, 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 blend. Actually, there's much less fallout on this than I was expecting, which is good. Um, well, one of the benefits that Laura has is that she's actually an artist. I learned so much from her. She put a film up um, relating to this palette and showing how you don't have to just use orange or brown to blend out a yellow and she showed you how to blend it with greens, with blues, with purple and I've actually used that quite a few times now. Um, blending a yellow with a purple and a purple with a yellow because now I know the technique to do it without it going muddy I love the combination of those two colours together um, and I can't thank her enough for putting that film up and explaining from an artist's point of view how you blend those two colours together she's just a wealth of knowledge she really is I'm just cleaning this brush off Got a clean washcloth that I use. Um, I don't like using um, 
colour swatches anymore. I think they are far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you've got natural hair brushes. I mean, these are all synthetic, but you know, just right. I'm going to go in with this. It's actually a lip brush from the Jeffrey Morphe set. I've dipped my head so you can see it easily against my hair. Um, it wasn't sold as part of the set, it was sold as a separate item. And it's the JS24. And I'm going to go into Sweet Spot with this, which obviously is the matte that I'm going to be using on my lid. Um, I've got a little mirror here that I'm going to use to look down into just so that you can see what I'm doing on screen there. I mean there's a reasonable amount of fallout from blending that shimmer but not as much as I was expecting. This is such a gorgeous, lemony, beautifully bright, actual springtime look. So it's perfect for, for Laura because she's heading into, she's in spring, heading into summer now. Whereas obviously in the northern hemisphere we're autumn heading to winter. I'm just going to stretch that out like I explained earlier. If you do have to do this with yours, only stretch it out as far as you need to, don't wallop it out to your ear roll and only leave it stretched out for as long as you need to, as soon as you can let it go Ooh, frozen um, and then just continue as normal with the rest of the lid I always get more fallout this side because this eyelid is looser because it got pulled around so much when I was a kid. It just goes to show you, 40 odd years ago, the damage that was done from pulling an eyelid around. So be gentle with yours, please. I mean, you could use a glitter glue underneath this mat, or you could wet it if you really wanted to, but I quite like the way it looks, as it is, to be honest. Oh. Right. I'm going to pause you while I tidy this up with some micellar water and uh, I shall pop some foundation and whatnot on and then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. For you my darlings there will be no delay. I however will have to wait for the next time that I press record to chat with you again. Hello. I am back. I went a little bit ham with the blush today, but oh well. Right, I'm going to go back in with this Revolution brush. Oh, so I really want to go in with a dark one, but the dark one is a shimmer. I don't want to put shimmer under my eyes today. Um, I'm going to go in with Stinger which is the lightest one, the first one that I put on and just buff that all the way along the lower lash line like so Such a fresh look. I really like a monochrome look. I mean, very often if I'm doing just a quick look and, and need to get out the door, I'll just do like a one and done. Literally just one colour and blend it up. I think yellow is one of the prettiest colours to do that with. Hmm. I like this look. Not entirely sure it's the kind of look that most people would be wearing this time of year. But then when do I follow what everybody else does? Uh, I don't. But, right. 
let's grab my Jeffree Sock off focus because I haven't worn this one for quite a while and it is a champagne gold that is actually light enough for my skin but deep enough for the more melanin enriched amongst us this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought for me by about a decade ago now I think had it years and years and years and years and years I'm just going to put that under the brow and the inner corner and just along under the tear duct there just to join in with that beautiful lemony shade that I've got underneath I know it's the honey palette but this to me is more lemon than honey Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I cover myself in some more highlight because you know me in highlight. <clears throat> uh, I will pop some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with this hair and I'll be back with my finished look. I am back. Obviously sarcophagus, I went overboard with it but then when do I not when it's highlights? I would love to get my hands on one of those new extreme frosts, but I ain't paying 50 quid for a highlight. Jeffrey, how about you, you know, do smaller pans and sell them for cheaper? Anywho, uh, mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa one. I really like it, but. It has a very, very large brush, so if you've got tiny eyes, you may struggle. Lippy is a Jeffrey from, I believe, summer this year, 20, 2019. Why did I about to say 2016? Where did the last three years go? Whoa, okay. Uh, and this is in shade Glazed which I really like because I just think it picks up on the yellow without making me look sick. So, this is my finished look with a honey palette using the odd numbers but avoiding the glitter. So my darlings, once you have liked, commented, maybe even shared this one I'm gonna need you to go over to the other two girls Hello! and check out their films and see just exactly which colours they had obviously they're gonna have the same palette but did they have odds? did they have evens? did they include the glitter? or like me did they decide no, just mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. there's only one way to find out my darlings and that is to check out the description box and follow the link either to their channel or to their film and then do all that good youtubery stuff give them a like, give them a comment tell them you came from 4F and uh, and just sit back and relax and enjoy their film. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm really glad you're here and I hope you enjoyed listening to me witter away about all kinds of things, uh, uh, probably losing track of what I was saying at least once or twice. The joys of living with chronic pain. So, if you feel like you can put up with watching a few more of mine, I do have others you can check out. And uh, once you've decided whether or not you'd like to continue seeing films of mine, uh, the subscribe button is there for your delectation. Oh, it's nice. Oh. I'm pretty sure that this has now become a nervous habit. So I'm super tempted to get my nose pierced here 
so when I do that it hurts and then that might break me of that wiggling the end of my nose habit because it always wipes on foundation off the end of my nose and I look like Rudolph which is appropriate for the season anyhow talking of appropriate for the season the subscribe button is red feel free to turn it grey like the other reindeer noses oh, oh, my reindeer nose is grey well they are in my lifetime now anyway I think this is quite enough chuntering away from me all that remains for me to say as ever my darlings is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time Bye for now.